I know that sounds really harsh, but it's kind of just the reality we live in with a lot of streaming movies. Oh my God. What is going on? Katie, you won the lottery. And now anyone with a losing ticket that kills you before sundown gets her money. Hello, Jab by Movies here, and you're watching Fresh Releases. My name is James. My name is Blaze. And today we're checking out the Amazon original Jackpot. Hero! Katie's the biggest jackpot of all time. Hero! Just find her. Cowabunga. Journal. In the near future, a grand lottery has been newly established in California. The catch? Kill the winner before sundown to legally claim their multi-billion dollar jackpot. So, James, this is another one of those straight to Amazon originals starring none other than John Cena. Also, we got Aquafina in this film. And this film felt like it came out of nowhere. I never saw a trailer for anything. I just saw on the homepage, like, John Cena's face. And I was like, is that... Wait, what was the movie that he did before? I already forgot the name of it. <laughs> Ricky. I, I was like, is that Ricky Stenicki? I'm like, no, it's Jackpot starring Ricky Stenicki. Or I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> when I when I tuned into it, yeah, obviously it wasn't Ricky Stenicki. But yeah, this was a surprising little movie that got premiered on Prime Video. James, what'd you think of the film? Yeah, and also directed by Paul Feig, uh, you know, director who's made a lot of movies that I like overall. Uh, just uh, kind of the same thing with uh, Judd Apatow and Paul Feig. They make good movies, but they just make them way too long. That's my main complaint with his movies. But, you know, Bridesmaids, The Heat, Spy, all fun movies. Figured that I'd enjoy this movie for the most part. Uh, but this movie does feel very, like, like, weird, like going straight to streaming with big decent actors in there and directed by Paul Feig and stuff and why is it that this movie didn't get made or put into theaters I don't know if it just Amazon bought it or if it is an actual Amazon original uh but you know watching the movie itself is what makes you kind of find out it's solid just for John Cena I guess you could say he's just a very likable guy I still have yet to see a movie where I really dislike John Cena he's very good at physical comedy very good at just making also the funniest faces and reactions and heartfelt despite being this like comically overly large guy and stuff too like you know the rock uh the rock or uh whether it's whether it's the rock or uh, i forget the name of the other wrestler actor who's in knock of the cabin you can help oh, me. Uh, batista dave batista right thank you um just like you know all three bring something likable and different to the table but of the bunch like you know i'd say john cena is the most fun to watch and i pretty much enjoy everything he's been in and enjoy him in this but what we have here also though is just uh, kind of unrealistic interpretation of Los Angeles when I live in Los Angeles. A lot of this is shot in Georgia, but a lot is also shot in LA. And then also just an unlikable protagonist. Like, I don't know if I'm just holding it against Aquafina just because I've helped her out in real life in my term, in my time in retail, and she was very rude in person. But just seeing her in this movie, she's also just very rude in the movie, too. Like, her roommates uh, at the Airbnb are not likable people, but they're at least nice, though, and do have, like, generally, like, friendly uh, manners towards her. And just the whole time, she's just so sarcastic and rude the whole time. I'm just like, I don't like you as a main character. Um, but, yeah, what are your thoughts coming out of it? Yeah, this film didn't really work for me, I feel like, at all. Like, I think it was an entertaining streaming watch, but I don't think I'm ever going to think about this movie again. I know that sounds really harsh, but it's kind of just the reality we live in with a lot of streaming movies. And I, I don't know if it's just that... I mean, you'll see theatrical movies that are equally like don't really click on all levels. Like they had all the pieces to work. I think Paul uh, Feig's a good director. I think he's brought us good movies. I think it what really didn't work for me was just the this kind of whole script was trying to be and I even saw in the trivia that they wanted this to be like a Jackie Chan movie, essentially. And I don't know if it's just like 
the, is that just the Simu Liu curse where every film that he's in now, people want it to be like a Jackie Chan movie for some reason, because that was the whole thing about like Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings. I haven't seen the film, but I know everyone said like, this is like a Jackie Chan movie. I would probably beg to differ if I watched the movie. I feel like being a huge Jackie Chan fan, but yeah, I feel like this, the action just didn't really work for me. I felt like the comedy was there at times. There was some pretty good jokes in it, but a lot of the action scenes and like choreography, it just didn't work with the people that they had. Like, I guess, you know, it's like, they're not really action actors that we know. So, I mean, and are those really people anymore besides people that show up in Marvel movies? You know, like, is there really bankable action stars? You know, um, I would like to think that there is, but I don't know if, you know, the wide general populace would know any people that show up in some of these action movies, especially when a lot of the action films nowadays are usually like straight to DVD stuff. Um, but yeah, like I, I felt like the action comedy aspect didn't work and maybe it was some of the, uh, concept really because it's done in such like a jokey manner that it kind of like falls flat in a way like it's definitely trying to be the comedy purge but was anyone asking for that right yeah i mean that's well i think first and foremost this movie is a comedy at the end of it but just for my problem with it actually is there's just too much action for it i didn't realize that the approach was to be kind of like a jackie chan style movie because when i think that then yeah, I'm thinking of fun action with just comical, like, you know, over the top movements at times and fun stunts that can be laughable at times. Uh, that's like, you know, one of the main characteristics with the movies that I have seen. I haven't seen as many as you have, but you know, we're not talking like Rush Hour or the Medallion or the Tuxedo style movies. We're actually talking about like, you know, movies that you grew up with and stuff too. Uh, example, um, uh, well, actually, you can probably give the examples. Better police, than I can. police story, police story two. You know, yeah. Operation Avalanche. You got it. Yeah, exactly. See, and I don't get that vibe at all from this movie for the most part, too. Uh, the third or the final climactic battle sequence uh, when everyone's fighting for this uh, lottery ticket. I just thought dragged on for way too long, too. Like there's that one point where she defeats the villain and knocks him down into the orchestra pit. But then he comes back and then we have this other like action sequence and then another action sequence going up top high above everyone, too. And just like. Uh, I found this like it's a fun premise, but I just found it just a little too ridiculous. Like, how did we get here? And like, you know, like for The Purge, it's a horror film. I get it. But like how just all of a sudden is this a thing only in Los Angeles specifically? And then how does someone something like this happen? And not everyone in the world knows about how inhumane and disgusting this is, too. Like, I know there's that throwaway line, like, don't come at me being like, well, she says that they all she does is watch movies with her mom and doesn't watch the news and television because it's so depressing. There's still no way to not hear about this somehow, whether it's like TikTok, Instagram, social media, just on your phone in general, or just casually putting on the news. This is going on like, you know, all the time and you have no way of knowing about this. Uh, it's just like so ridiculous too. like uh like yeah that that throwaway line just didn't work for me and just like they could have wrote that a little bit better and like kind of just made it make more sense i feel like yeah it has that like very dismal ability that's like how have we come to this and like it's a comedy movie i don't know why there are like those those movies like the purge that take the more like savage approach where it's like this is what that dystopian reality we're headed towards whereas like this is like that dystopian reality that's supposed to be funny but is it like the jokes aren't really from the concept itself they're just jokes that are in the movie that are pretty funny but they don't really ever come from the concept i think that that's probably the issue the jokes aren't really motivated from the fact that you know she's being chased to the death essentially um but i think a lot of it probably came from this film being green greenlit off the concept of like oh this is kind of like squid game you know but really people really locked into squid game not because it was like comedic it does have its funny moments but it really does focus on the drama of that situation and the, the harsh reality of that situation especially with you know getting into squid game when they're returning to the games because there's really nothing left for them out there 
it has that kind of saw approach to it where I felt like this was clearly just trying to take, you know, just the the fun kind of aspect of it, but it might have helped having more people that were kind of in tune with action movies. I mean, even Paul Feig, he hasn't done a ton. He's done like some buddy comedy action movies, but their focus has always really been on the comedy. And I think this, he was trying to take that approach of going a little bit further with the action. And for me, it did fall flat. Yeah. Yeah. I, overall, like, I guess you can say it's just like, yeah, a, a flat movie that like could have just been done much better. And you expect more from someone like Paul Feig to like, you know, everyone's going to always bring up like Ghostbusters and stuff and just like, well, he's not a good director. He made Ghostbusters. At least that was people like trying hard on that movie. Just didn't work for everyone. Um, but this movie just feels very like give me my paycheck for everyone in this movie. Like uh, even like, you know, John Cena, he's like still fun within the movie, but that might be just because I'm a John Cena fan. But yeah, just nothing really just sticks out for this movie other than just like, like also like, oh, Sean William Scott's in it, cool. And then, oh, it's just the intro of the movie, which is unfortunate, I thought. Um, yeah, it just feels like a lot of just like phoning it in kind of material, I guess you could say for this movie. Yeah, definitely. I would say like if you have your Amazon Prime and you're just looking for something funny watch, there's probably some better things on there. But I, I, th I think you at least have like a heh, this is funny. But, yeah. you know, there's some there's yeah, some moments, especially some of the MGK stuff was pretty funny. I enjoyed that. But um, I totally forgot yeah. about that even. <laughs> <laughs> he was definitely getting his paycheck it felt like but um yeah. at least he was he was pretty funny and a lot a lot of the concept around that was pretty hilarious but yeah i'd say like there's probably some better things i know rings of power just oh wait that's probably not better than this <laughs> yeah i mean i'd say give ricky stanicki a watch i thought that movie got a little <laughs> unnecessary like over the top eight for that movie i thought that was a little bit more fun than this movie at least um, but you know, a great way to help support the show, you know, just let us know what you thought about Jackpot in the comments below. You can also rent it through our Amazon affiliate link in our description box below. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button, hit the subscribe button and click that notification bell to get all of our latest updates. And speaking of updates, be sure to catch all our social media links down below for Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and we also have our own personal letterbox accounts. That'll conclude this week's episode. Tune in next week for a brand new video.